What's up ladies and gentlemen, your favorite TV star Peppa Pig here to drop what if Deku had every quirk. I know clicking on this you're probably like wow another OP Deku, but not quite. This Deku will have a random quirk every day, like a sort of roulette of quirks, so it's gonna be a blast making this series, and I hope you guys leave a ton of likes on this one, cause I would genuinely be depressed if I have to stop making this series. That said though, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. We start our story off in the perspective of Izuku when he's 4 years old. Now Deku would be in the back of the classroom working on a little arts and crafts project and Bakugo would have already discovered his quirk about 2 weeks ago. While Izuku was working on this project, he goes over towards the glue and when he starts pouring it, he realizes that his hand? it literally starts dripping glue off of it. So Izuku goes over towards the sink, starts trying to wipe it off when he realizes the glue just doesn't stop. Suddenly he takes his hand out and his hand goes back to normal. And then one of the teachers goes up to him and is like, Izuku, are you okay? And Izuku's like, I'm fine holding his hand out and shooting glue at her face. She would say, oh, looks like your quirk manifested, Izuku. And she'd be like, don't worry, it's okay, we'll call your mom. Bakugo and everybody else would be looking and Bakugo would say, wait, Izuku, what's your quirk? And Deku would say, I don't know, but I'll tell you guys later. And Bakugo would realize that every time that Deku takes a step, little pieces of glue would come off of him. Once Izuku would get picked up by Inko, he would leave his, his, his entire seat just full of glue. And once Izuku makes his way towards the quirk doctor, the doctor would be like, hey, looks like you have a quirk, kid. Even though you have that weird joint in your toe, you were born with a quirk. You're kind of an odd case. You should be glad that you were born with a quirk. Izuku would smile and the next day at school, he'd, he'd be ready to tell everybody, hey, you know, I have a glue quirk, you know what I mean? But what pretty much ends up happening is that once Izuku gets home and he goes to sleep and he's so happy that he got a quirk and he's like, okay, I'm going to use my quirk this way, this way, this way, you know what I mean? He wakes up the next day and he would be like, he would be like so ready to tell everybody. But in the morning when Inko would put him in the car, she'd be like, Izuku, why do you have wings on your back? And she'd be like, did you create those out of glue or something? And Deku would say, uh, maybe. As he would be dropped off and once he's there, he would tell everybody that his quirk is glue human. He can turn into glue and physical attacks don't really hurt him. And then Bakugo would be like, you're lying, Deku. I mean, look behind you. You have wings. You clearly have some sort of flying quirk. And Deku would be like, no, I don't. He'd be like, look. And he tried to shoot glue out of his hands, but he realizes that he genuinely can't. Suddenly, Izuku would flap his wings and he would start floating above the air. And everybody would be watching as Izuku's flying in the middle of the classroom. Bakugo would be like, <laughs> show off. But he'd have a smirk on his face, thinking to himself that that's exactly what he would do if he had a wing quirk. And he would tell Izuku that his quirk is awesome. Awesome. He has some sort of wing quirk. Deku would say, I'm serious, guys. Yesterday it was different. I'm gonna have my mom take me to the quirk doctor. The same, like, like 30 minutes later, Inko picks up Izuku, and then Izuku would be at the quirk doctor as he would be told that he has a wing quirk. And it's very strange considering that yesterday he had a glue quirk. They would tell him to come back the next day and that the doctor has some sort of theory on what this could actually be. He would wake up the next day with a quirk that lets him charge anything with a touch, even a car battery. And yes, I got that idea from RDC World 1. Uh, if you guys have seen that video, like if you were in My Hero. But anyways, um, Izuku wakes up with a quirk that essentially allows him to touch a phone and charge it. And the way he would find this out is that on his way towards the quirk doctor first thing in the morning, Izuku grabs onto Inko's phone, which would actually almost be dead. And then it would go to 100%. And Inko would be like, whoa, Izuku. Did you just charge my phone? And Deku would be like, I, I guess I did. Suddenly their car breaks down on the side of the road and she'd be like, ah, the battery's dead. Deku's like, is that the battery? And he touches it and then suddenly it would be completely charged. Inka would be like, oh, you charged it. And then Izuku would get back in the car, make his way towards the quirk doctor and the doctor would have Izuku charge his phone. He'd be like, Thanks, young man. He then goes on to go towards this like whiteboard and like with, with like chalk and stuff. And he says, okay, this is most people. They always have one quirk and it's constant. But this 
is Izuku, and he ends up pretty much showing them a physical demonstration of what Izuku's body is like and how it's weird that Izuku's gonna be waking up with different quirks every single day. Izuku would ask the quirk doctor if that's a good or bad thing, and the doctor would say that it's kind of a good and a bad thing considering that Izuku will be the random hero, and one day he might have a powerful quirk and the next day he might have like the weakest quirk ever. He would have a good laugh at this and he would tell Izuku that it's probably in his best interest to become a hero. He'd probably become really famous having a quirk like that and Izuku would have a big bright smile on his face knowing that even the doctor believes in him so he's now super super happy and he gets dropped off at school only to tell everybody that apparently he has a random quirk every day and Bakugo would be like oh that's interesting with you know Deku being like yeah but I'm not so sure how I'm gonna be a hero because one day I might have a really strong quirk and one day I might not have a powerful quirk at all. How will I even help people? Bakugo would be like, that's easy Deku. All you have to do is train your body so that you could be strong regardless of what quirk you have. And Deku would think, he'd be like, you're right. From here, Deku dabs up Bakugo and Bakugo would say, don't worry Deku, me and your quirks will be sure to become heroes someday. And from here would start an amazing friendship between Bakugo and Deku, where Bakugo and Deku actually become friends because this time Bakugo doesn't think of Izuku as lesser than him, and instead he thinks that Izuku has one of the most funny and like fantastic quirks that you could possibly get. I mean having the ability of having a different quirk every day sounds like the most fun thing in the world, and it is. You know you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't trade that for the world. But anyways, we have a little bit of a time skip, and we would find ourselves on the day of the Sludge Villain incident. And for years on end, Izuku would have random quirks every day, but would train with Bakugo on days that he could train, and other days he couldn't because of his quirks wouldn't allow him to live a normal life. Some days, he'd have quirks that would make him completely unable to function like a normal human, so some days he couldn't even train with Bakugo, but most of the time, he'd be fine. And he would find his quirk to be a blessing and a curse, considering some days, like I said, he'd be really powerful, and others, not so much. But eventually, like I said, we get to the day of the Sludge Villain attack, and Deku and Bakugo would both be announced as future heroes by the teacher. He goes on and tells everybody about the quirk aptitude test, and Bakugo and Deku would both stand up on their desks and be like, we're gonna become heroes, you know? And, you know, the class is cheering and agreeing, you know, they have no, like, m malice towards them. They're like, yeah, you, you guys really will. And, you know, people would have already been telling Deku that someday soon he should be the random hero um random or randos or something like that i don't know think of a name guys comment it down below and i'll and i'll pin the best one or something like that but anyways deku would do that and on his way home deku would realize oh crap i'm late it's my mom's birthday so he ends up taking a different path home and this is when he would get attacked by the sludge villain however when the sludge villain comes out of the sewer deku being a lot faster and a lot stronger than the normal human being being superhuman level already would jump up into the air and begin jumping over and over and over and over again the sludge villain being like kid give me your body i need it i didn't know that freak was in town and deku would say no way as you know he's up in the air and the sludge villain tries to grab at him but Deku just gets higher and higher so high and then, and then um All Might comes in out of nowhere from the sewer and throws a Texas smash absolutely splattering the villain everywhere and Deku jumps down onto the ground with All Might being like kid where'd you come from and Deku would say oh I was here the whole time that thing tried to attack me so I had to use one of my quirks to get away and All Might would be like, one of your quirks, and Deku would say, don't worry about it, before he then helps All Might bottle up the sludge villain, and he would ask All Might for an autograph. All Might thinks it's weird that the kid said one of my quirks, and he wouldn't really question it, he'd just be like, whatever. Ultimately, taking the sludge villain to the, uh, to the police station, and Izuku would make his way home and celebrate his mother's birthday. This is when Izuku would go to sleep early, and he decides that tomorrow, hopefully, he'll have a good quirk. Imagine going to sleep and knowing that tomorrow your day's gonna be so much different than it is today day it's so funny but the next day at school when izuku walks in bakugo would be like huh what's new today and deku would show him the useless quirk that he spawned with today he would laugh and they would train after school like usual for 10 months deku trains in martial arts and stuff like that and whenever he has strong quirks he and bakugo would spar they fight it out and most of the time bakugo would end up not coming out on top but because of the fact that bakugo is pretty much fighting a new villain every single day bakugo would be at bare minimum pro hero levels deku and bakugo would have become like the bestest of friends and they're combination attacks are so 
so absolutely lethal, they could probably even take out a Prime All Might by themselves. While Deku is OP in his own right, he's basically superhuman level by himself, and by the end of these 10 months of training, Izuku would be way, 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 way powerful. Not only that, but Deku having the ability to control so many quirks during his lifetime would give him a keen understanding of how to face off against different people with different quirks. Knowing that he has the ability of most of the people which he's probably going to fight someday, he knows exactly what the weaknesses are and how to handle them. People like ice quirks, fire. People with fire quirks, water. You know what I mean? Like he basically figured out the ins and outs of most quirks that most people will have in his classroom. When he's in, um, you know, school, he and Baku go study and stuff like that. And one day they'd be in Deku's house playing video games when suddenly, you know, Deku would say, hey, Baku go. You mind going outside and, you know, getting us some ice cream? And Bakugo would say, nah, bro, I, I won the last fight. You got to go get it. And Deku would be like, come on, dude. I, I had the weakest quirk ever. And Bakugo would say, too bad. That's why I told you to train your body. Not my fault that you haven't been training hard enough. Izuku grits his teeth, and for the following two months left of the training, Izuku would train even harder than ever before, getting way past the levels of stain when it comes to just his normal human intent. He also has the ability of bloodless, which he can use. Used to pretty much catch people off guard and he can also has the ability to you know just be a very very experienced and common collected fighter the entrance exam day would finally come around the corner and on this particular day zuku would wake up with a powerful wind quirk which would let him completely obliterate all of the robots in the um physical portion of the exam and as for the mental portion aka the written exam izuku would pass with flying colors like I said, he obliterates robots and he would ultimately be the one responsible for saving Uraraka, using a massive gust of wind to blow the the, the zero pointer um and make it topple over, and then ultimately using his wind quirk to shoot the rocks off of Uraraka picking her up and taking her to recovery girl. Izuku would shock all of the people there and Uraraka would think that his quirk was awesome. And then suddenly we would have one week go by in which Deku would switch between one quirk and another quirk and another quirk and eventually Deku would get his acceptance letter. Two days later Monday would arrive and Izuku would wake up getting ready and change for school. When Deku's doing this he would wake up and see a massive breakfast that his mom would have made him for his first day of school and Deku in iconic anime character movie character series character everything fashion bro grabs a piece of toast and, and literally runs out of the door imagine the disrespect but anyways he does so and then he would meet bakugo outside they catch the train and they make their way towards ua once there he and bakugo would go towards their desks and bakugo puts his feet on top of the table as deku would sit right next to bakugo at the front and then suddenly ida walks over and would be like hey get your feet off those desks do you not know that multiple ua students will use these desks and very powerful heroes before us have used these before don't disrespect the property and bakugo Bakugo would say, kid, who put a stick up your ass? Stop being so uptight. Ida would be like, why I never? And he'd be like, I never thought that somebody would speak to me in such a manner. And Bakugo would say, yeah, well, it looks like somebody finally did. Now get lost, kid, before I blow you to smithereens. And Deku would look towards Ida and say, hey, just leave him alone. He has this kind of personality. Trust me, he's not doing it to be disrespectful. And Ida would be like, well, I can't allow this to happen in front of me. And Deku would be like, dude, just go sit down. Like, you're bothering me as well. Like, I'm pretty sure nobody cares. Suddenly, Aizawa would wake up in a sleeping bag and Uraraka would go right over towards the direction of Deku as, you know, Deku would see Uraraka and she would thank Izuku for saving him. Mid-thanking, though, Aizawa wakes up and he'd be like, all right, put these on and meet me outside. Uraraka interrupts being like but what about orientation and ultimately he would tell them that's irrelevant that they have three years to train and that he's not going to be wasting it telling them how great they are for getting into a school that that's the easy part now comes the hard part so they go train and they go towards the fitting rooms or no not fitting rooms but changing rooms and once there they end up changing their outfits into the ua school uniforms and making their way towards the outside the ua gym uniforms by the way and then they go outside and they get prepared to take on the test izuku would have been the one who scored the highest amount of points even over bakugo slightly just due to the fact that he saved araka so that would have ended up helping izuku get 10 actually 22 more points than bakugo so he ends up stomping his score however once he Izuku would have the ball tossed to him, Aizawa would tell him not to hold back, and Deku would close his eyes, 
grip the ball as hard as he can and Aizawa like let me tell you Aizawa's expecting this thing to go into like space or something like he's like this kid with the wind quirk I better keep an eye on him he seems like a very powerful student Izuku grabs the ball and tosses it and gets not too impressive markings like he gets like um what, what was Bakugo's meters like 70 something meters so he gets like 200 something meters and Aizawa would be like I said use your quirk and Deku would say problem with that teach is that I don't have a quirk today really and Aizawa would be like what are you talking about I told you to go all out and then Izuku would say you didn't read my file and Aizawa would say what are you talking about Deku would then have a bunch of people looking at him who were like I thought you had a win quirk and then Uraka would be like yeah use your power and Deku would say I had a win quirk but um every day how do I explain this every day I wake up with a new quirk some days I might have a powerful one, some days I might have a weak one. My quirk is random, it's almost like a quirk generator, and by the way that's what I'm using to make up these random quirks. And so today he says that his quirk was to put on anything he touches as soon as he touches it. And people would be like, but isn't that just super speed, like you're quickly putting it on? And Deck was like, eh, not quite, I mean, give me that cup. And Izuku puts on the cup, but he's like, fashion, you know what I mean? And obviously I got that shtick from Caleb City, you know, absolutely love that guy. But anyways, though, from here, Izuku then would look at them and would say not to worry about him, that he's trained his body so much to the point where he can definitely keep up with quirk people with or without a powerful quirk. So the following portions of the rest of the exams would go and Izuku would be in the top five leaderboard for how he did with the tests. Izuku would have actually blown everybody out of the water with how powerful he is even without a powerful quirk and this would let people know okay don't mess with him he's clearly a lot stronger than you would think. I mean obviously he is look at Deku bro's ripped he literally looks exactly like what he looks like in the in the thumbnail and just to let you guys know izuku has like blue hair he has like these cool looking red eyes and his um like pro hero outfit is going to be exactly like what you guys see in the thumbnail like just a really cool black and white looking outfit that's just going to be like just fire just no but anyways though doing this what izuku would do is basically wake up the random uh, i mean not wake up the random but wake up the next two days and because he doesn't end up getting expelled the person who does get expelled would be hagakure why because i love mineta and like let's be honest all she could do is turn invisible or not even turn invisible all she does is be invisible so i don't think that would really help her with much of the portions i mean at least mineta ended up you getting that one good score with the ball with the side to side thing right so it just makes more sense for her to get expelled since she's not even comic relief she's just kind of a useless character but anyways though for the following two days they go to school and have normal academic like days and for those two days izuku would have access to a slime quirk which would remind him a lot of the sludge villain and the next day he would have a squid quirk but the third day which is going to actually be the day of the heroes versus villains day where all might bust in through the classroom and he'd be like i am here bro wakes up with a white flame quirk which would actually be really 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 awesome and for this particular day all might walks in you know he introduces himself to the class and everybody's just loving it you know what i mean your favorite hero walks in and um by the way i have a question guys are you guys watching the nba finals i know that or no not finals but the playoffs they're pretty good right now i mean lebron versus curry it's going crazy sorry for my tangent but i just had to ask if you are comment it down below anyways though so continuing on with the story izuku like i said he has a white flame quirk and it's actually very very potent on this particular day izuku would actually end up being um um going outside he puts on his pro hero outfit and bro is just looking immaculate i'm talking the girls in ua look at him and they're like oh let me get a piece of that but we already know my boy Zuku ain't finna get shipped with nobody here. I don't really feel like doing a ship for this story, so we're not gonna do that. And instead, I'm gonna be saying that Izuku would end up getting paired up with Mineta, because, <laughs> like, why not? So he gets paired up with Mineta, and he and Mineta are both tasked with facing off against Ida and Bakugo. Bakugo would smirk, saying that he's he, that that Izuku is going to be having a blast facing off against him. And Bakugo would be like, don't get too cocky, Deku. Today, I'm going to show everybody who the real alpha dog is here. And Deku would say, I wouldn't count on it, Bakugo. And Bakugo would say, so what does that mean? Did you wake up with a powerful quirk? And Deku would say, maybe, maybe not. You'll have to wait and see. And Bakugo would say, <laughs> whatever, Deku. I'm going to crush you, all right? 
Don't take it to don't take it the hard way. And Deku would laugh before then making his way towards Mineta, and Mineta would be like, So did you wake up with a strong strong quirk today? And Deku would be like, Yeah, I have a white flame quirk. Also, you're weird. Can you stay away from me? And Mineta would be like, sorry. Before he then, you know, jumps away and he like gets away from Izuku. And Izuku would just wait for the for the starting, you know, whistle to go off. And then ultimately Izuku just makes his way towards the building. Izuku knowing how Bakugo is, Bakugo comes in and he'd be like, Deku, come out and fight me. And Deku would be like, I'm down here. And you know, ultimately Bakugo ends up arriving in the hallway and Deku would say, Look, Bakugo, you don't want the smoke today. Trust me. And Bakugo would say, Trust me, I do. Before shooting a powerful explosion at Deku, the size of literally the explosion that would come out of his gauntlets, and Deku using his white flames, he would shoot it at Bakugo. Bakugo hides behind one of the pillars that would be there, and he realizes that Deku most definitely woke up with a powerful quirk. Those flames are so hot he could feel them even though he was hiding behind something. And Deku looks towards Bakugo before saying, eh, doesn't look like you're too happy now. Deku says, how about we take this outside, considering that nothing good can happen from us using our quirks like crazy in here. Bakugo would say, couldn't agree more. And so he tackles Deku out of the, out of the third floor window, and Deku using his flame quirks would shoot it to propel himself up so he doesn't crash, Bakugo doing the same thing, and then both Deku using his flames quirk to fly and Bakugo doing the same with his explosions would then immediately start going at it. Fist clashing and Deku shooting flames, Bakugo shooting explosions and Bakugo using his knowledge of facing off against different quirks and opponents and adversaries would do his absolute best to fight off against Deku. However, Deku having the ability of flames and having fought Bakugo his whole life, he kind of knows what Bakugo will think. So the fact that Deku does have an OP quirk today, he knows how Bakugo will fight, he's pretty much a master at up close martial arts combat, and this isn't a challenge of who can beat the other person, but who can restrain the other, Deku would come up with a very, very slick idea of capture of using the capture tape to beat Bakugo and not really having to truly defeat him. So Deku shoots a blinding gust of, of flames at the direction of Bakugo, and Bakugo, you know, he has to tank the attack and it burns him. But as that's happening, Deku creates flame wings, flies towards Bakugo, uses the capture tape and wraps it around him, barely closing it. And Bakugo would be like, huh? Ah? But then he realizes that he got captured with the tape and Bakugo would be like damn it as Deku looks at him and says it sucks to suck Bakugo but I won today and Bakugo would be like yeah well tomorrow when you don't have a strong quirk we'll see about that and Deku would say I doubt it as he runs off towards Ida and absolutely curb stomps him then he would make his way towards the towards the examination room and Momo would say that Izuku was clearly the MVP that Mineta doesn't even deserve a passing grade. He literally did nothing but hide and ride Izuku's coattails. So he doesn't deserve any points. And All Might couldn't agree more. So Mineta would get a zero and everybody else would do absolutely great. All of this portion would go just like you guys would probably be expecting. And it is now where we will jump to the next day and find out what quirk Izuku has today. Izuku wakes up the very next day and it would be here that Izuku would be like mm, I can't wait to see what quirk I'm gonna get today Izuku from here he would be like all right let's see if it's some sort of strange quirk and it would be at this moment that Izuku would be like huh what's this and he realizes he just shot clouds out of his hands Izuku would think sweet looks like today i'm gonna have the ability of shooting clouds or at least controlling them some sort and so izuku would get his stuff and be ready for his next day at school izuku arrives and once there they would end up having their usual hero training activities which izuku would be you know monitored by izawa who would be there today and not all might and during this day izuku would be facing off against um let's say ojiro because why not ojiro rushes in at deku and deku dodges out of the way jumping and then using a little thing of cloud to to form a barrier between he and ojiro however right as that happens aizawa's eyes widened and he would stop the fight immediately going towards deku with a serious expression and asking him like like what that quirk feels like and deku would say it's cool honestly but that's really all i can say and aizawa would say 
sorry, I, I didn't mean to stop the fight. He commences it, and from here, All Might comes in the classroom taking over, because Aizawa just got hit with a little bit of PTSD, remembering one of his good childhood friends, Shirakumo, and Izuku would wonder what was wrong with his teacher, but he doesn't know. Eventually, we time skip to the day of the USJ incident, and it would be on this day that Izuku would wake up with an overpowered gravity quirk. As anime fans, we love to show our support to our favorite shows by rocking anime apparel. But something I'm pretty sure we can all agree on is it's so expensive. So I've partnered up with Fandom to bring you all affordable, high quality anime merch that you are sure to love. And if you use my code Zether at checkout, you can even get an extra 10% off the already affordable merch. Keep in mind, it does come from overseas sellers, so its sizing is going to be different since it's overseas. That said, let's get back into the video. We kick off part two with Izuku going to the top of the roof. This would be right after Izuku just finished having breakfast, and Izuku would wonder to himself what quirk he has access to today. This is when Izuku would point his quirk towards the direction of the sea, and once doing so, Izuku would try to shoot a quirk out. Nothing works, then he tries to do the Spider-Man thing, seeing if maybe he finally got lucky and got access to spider-like abilities, but no. But eventually, Izuku would be walking downstairs thinking to himself that it didn't work, when suddenly, he would look at his mom, high-five her, and suddenly, Inko would fall to the ground. Izuku would realize exactly what just happened immediately, and he'd be like, oh, gravity quirk. Suddenly, he turns it off, and then he tells his mom sorry about that, but he's trying to adjust to this new quirk. And she'd be like, it's fine, it's fine, sweetie, I'm used to it, before then telling Izuku that he should go, he's late for school. Deku's was like, you're right before he then grabs his bag and makes his way towards UA. Izuku would end up arriving, and pretty much what would end up happening is that Izuku would pretty much just end up going to school, right? He arrives, getting there on the train, and Bakugo would be like, so Deku, what quirk do you have today? Deku looks at him and would be like, uh, just some gravity quirk. And then Bakugo would be like, gravity quirk? You mean like... Uh, you mean like uh, chubby cheeks over there? And Deku would say, nah, like this. As he shoves Bakugo, he doesn't even have to make direct contact. He just straight pulls his hand out and Bakugo's gravitational like force would go like times 10. It'd be like times 10 earth gravity. So Bakugo falls onto one knee and he'd be like, yeah, that's kind of strong. Deku would look at him and say, you have no idea. I don't even know what the extent of this quirk is, but I figure doing 10 times earth gravity would be a pretty cool start. Bakugo then looks at Deku and says, <laughs> you're telling me that quirk's pretty powerful. I think maybe if we were to spar today, you'd have me beat, but luckily, I don't feel like sparring today. Deku looks at him and says, hmm, how convenient, huh? And Bakugo says, shut up, nerd. Before they then walk into the classroom, sit down in their seats, and this is when Aizawa would walk inside of the room and be like, all right, did all of you guys get your permission slip signed? And everybody would be like, sure did. They each walk up individually and give Aizawa their slips, as eventually they all make their way on towards the bus to get to the USJ. Now, they would arrive, and once they do so, they end up seeing a purple mist go up into the sky after 13 gives her lame speech, and Izuku seeing this would look towards Aizawa, who looks with a worried expression and sees Kuragiri in the air, and Izuku immediately realizes, okay, he's a villain, so he uses his gravity quirk to crush Kuragiri under immense gravity that would actually hurt Kuragiri. Keep in mind, it wouldn't hurt Kuragiri if he was just missed, but he has that metal plate on him, so crushing that with the force of 30 times gravity would definitely do a number on Kuragiri. He's completely taken out of the equation, which means that all of the students don't actually end up getting teleported to different spots this time, and instead they all stick together. Izuku would watch as Aizawa jumps down to the ground and begins facing off against a couple of villains, and Deku looks at Bakugo before Bakugo and Deku jump off towards the direction of the villains. Izuku immediately slamming his hand down on the ground would create a crater, using the grav gra gravitational force to make, make his body like so heavy for an instant as he hits the ground with his fist and crash like some naughty level punch as he then immediately goes back to normal gravity and then looking towards the direction of a bunch of villains izuku forces them to be under 20 times earth gravity crushing them under the pressure as bakugo comes in and uses a howitzer impact to absolutely obliterate tons and tons of villains aizawa using his cancellation quirk then takes out three villains and this is when they would turn towards the direction of a man with white hair and like 
weird looking skin and a really scratched up neck who would be scratching at himself being like, ah, it's not fair, Nomu, kill them. And you know, the Nomu would immediately look towards the direction of Aizawa and it like begins running, but Izuku is not playing no games. Holding one hand out, the Nomu would then sink 10 feet underground, not being able to move a muscle considering that Izuku's gravitational thing that he put on the Nomu was a hundred times. The Nomu gets crushed under the pressure immensely, considering that not even Dragon Ball characters were willing to put up with a hundred times Earth gravity. And then Izuku looking towards Shigaraki, he notices that Shigaraki would be like, Kuragiri, get me out of here, they cheated. But he realizes Kuragiri never comes. He then starts scratching his neck violently as he rushes at Izuku and says, It's all your fault! He would then grab at Izuku but realize that his quirk's not working as Aizawa was using his cancellation ability and Deku just puts gravity on, on Shigaraki times 5. Shigaraki falls onto one knee and would say, Damn you, heroes! Before Izuku would then say, Look, you're gonna tell me exactly why you came here. And Shigaraki would say, Isn't it obvious? To kill you and that damned All Might. As Izuku would say, sure, 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 killing us in All Might, fine, but how are you gonna do that exactly? And you know, Shigaraki says, that thing over there, we were gonna use that. Deku upping up the gravity more and more as Shigaraki tries to lie for a moment, but he finally lets out the truth. And then Izuku looks towards the direction of Shigaraki asking him who their leader is, considering he can't possibly be it. He's an overgrown man child. And, you know, Shigaraki lies saying, I'm the leader, but, you know, Deku just ups the gravity and Shigaraki is like, it's all for one, all for one, you know, he tells him and Izuku finally lets up. Shigaraki would be about to get restrained by Aizawa, but that's when suddenly as Izuku and Bakugo would have turned away and they would have walked off, you know, thinking that the fight was already done for, trying to go off and face off against the villains that were in different sections, like making a challenge for themselves. They both went away, right? Or they were at least going away. Bakugo would have blasted off faster than Deku could have, but Deku would be a distance away. And it would be at this moment that a black portal would open in the ground and it would suck Shigaraki inside with a man with a mask saying, I'll see you later, Midoriya. As from here, the portal would close and Izuku would be like, what? And he realizes that guy, he was definitely talking to me. You know what I mean? But pretty much what would end up happening is that Aizawa would say that they need to clean this mess up. And then all of them end up pretty much taking out the rest of the villains. Following this altercation happening, they would have, an, they would have at least one week off of school. And during this week off, they pretty much end up going on a very, very decent training moment. Like Bakugo and Deku train together. And during this time, Deku would end up getting really, really OP quirks. Wouldn't you know it? And I'm not going to go over the quirks because I'd have to like use the generator a bunch of times. But just know he does get a bunch of OP quirks. And he does train a lot with Bakugo, making Bakugo a lot stronger than he was before. Getting him prepped to using different quirks, you know what I mean? But eventually they end up returning to class. And on the first day that they returned, the day that everybody would be briefed on the UA festival and stuff like that and Uraraka's like are you guys ready you know what I mean the day that that happens Izuku would end up just looking at All Might as he walks into the classroom and he sees that his health bar is low Izuku would finally realize what his quirk is today seeing as he's been seeing people's health bars all day and he'd be like oh I guess I could just look at people's health but realizing that All Might is like in 40 like like it looks like he's only in 60 percent health the whole time izuku would pull all might to the side after class and ask him what that's about all might would tell him what happened and izuku would say that maybe he can help him izuku puts his hand on top of all might and it would be at this moment that all might would feel completely healed however izuku would pass out into unconsciousness having drained himself using a quirk that he wasn't used to using at all and he just thought that it might have been a healing quirk but apparently he was right all might gets healed back to 100% and now he doesn't have to go into a small might form and Izuku would be passed out for the rest of the day. He wakes up the next day and it would be the day of the sports festival. And on this day, Deku would actually end up getting a very decent quirk, which I'm not going to be telling you guys what it is yet, but I'm going to reveal it a little bit later on. So pretty much what ends up happening is that we would get to the sports festival and Bakugo does his usual tangent of being like, I'm going to win. You know what I mean? Or actually, no, he doesn't. Izuku's the one who goes on the podium and would, would give a really, like, um, motivational speech, you know what I mean? Telling everybody that 
you know, everybody could become a hero. You know what I mean? Like do your best out there, everybody, you know what I mean? And you know, they get really hyped and excited and people cheer Deku's name and Bakugo looks at Deku and says, if I was up there, I would have just told them I'm going to win. But seeing as I didn't get to go up there, I guess I'll have to wait for next year or something like that. And then Deku would laugh and be like, sure, as from here, we get into the first thing that's going to be happening, and that's the race. Deku using nothing but his physical speed that he's been training on, seeing as he has superhuman speed, would end up getting third place during the race portion of everything. And eventually, we would jump into the cavalry battle, which Izuku would team up with Bakugo, Uraraka, and Tokiyami, and ultimately get through as first place, seeing as Bakugo would have ended up having the first place headband, and that team would have been established. Mei Hatsume would have been like, please let me join your team, but Bakugo would have been like, get lost, you freak and then they would have ended up recruiting Uraraka and Tokiyami. After this they end up advancing and Deku's first opponent would be none other than Shinzo Hitoshi. The battle would immediately start actually no I'm not going to start it off yet. Deku as soon as he would be shown that he's going to be facing off against Shinzo would be approached by Ojiro who would tell him to be careful around that guy. That his quirk is strange he spoke to him and then nothing. It was almost as if he had no control over his body anymore. But Deku would simply just be like, sure, sure, sure. And then ultimately we have a 30 minute break in which all of the students would be allowed to have a moment of, of rest, right? During this time, Izuku would go on his phone and text back his mom saying that he's going to do his best to win this thing, but that he's not sure because his quirk for today is a little different. And Inko would say to do her best that she knows that her son is going to be a phenomenal hero someday. You know, he is a great hero after all, you know what I mean? And so Deku would be like, yeah. Thanks, mom. Ultimately, getting off of his phone and making his way towards the arena. He ends up arriving and all of the fans would immediately go haywire, being like, Izuku, 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 you know what I mean? But pretty much what ends up happening is that as soon as the match would be called by midnight, Deku would immediately scream at Shinso in a way that you guys probably weren't expecting. Deku would use something similar to present Mike's quirk where he can emit large, like, frequency noises. However, Deku's is a bit more OP and he has way more control over it than present Mike does. It's kind of like an evolved version of it, right? And so doing that, he shoots he shoots Shinso off of the stage and his ears would even start bleeding at the fact that Izuku just like, he screamed so loud. The frequency was insane, right? Shinso's words didn't even get out of his mouth before that happened, but ultimately Deku would advance on to the next round, and so what would pretty much end up happening is that he would be facing off against Todoroki next. Bakugo would end up telling Izuku to crush him, and Deku would say that he plans to, saying that... You know, he probably, he thought that honestly, Bakugo was going to be wanting to fight Todoroki. Bakugo says he does actually want to, but since he got matched up against him, to do him a favor and knock him a new one. Deku smiles and Todoroki, seeing as he has no reason to go up to Deku and be like, are you all my secret love child? Instead, just kind of leaves him alone. And during this time, Izuku would have a little bit of a talk with Uraraka. You know, she'd be pretty sad that she lost to Bakugo, but Deku lifts up her spirits by telling her that she can just get stronger, that her quirk of hers is amazing, and that she shouldn't, you know, be downed. This would end up sparking a crush between Uraraka towards Deku, which isn't reciprocated, and Deku would then make his way towards the stadium where he would face off against Todoroki. As soon as the match would start, Todoroki shoots a giant geyser of ice, which Izuku would use a sonic scream towards, and the ice would just shatter under the pressure. It would be just like when Izuku used his fingers, breaking each one and destroying the ice, but every time that, he, that Todoroki uses an ice attack, Deku just screams at it and it just shatters into a million little pieces, making the stadium extremely cold and people would be like, I should have brought a sweater. But ultimately, Deku and Sh Todoroki would continue fighting and Todoroki would use his eyes to create separation between him and Deku, but Deku just gets closer and closer and the screams would get louder and louder towards Todoroki. This match would be an explosive one and Todoroki's eyes would be going everywhere. Him realizing that his ice isn't doing anything would end up having to like jump back and use his eyes to like go into the air and maybe try to shoot ice attacks at Deku but it's just absolutely not working and Deku would end up actually overpowering Todoroki's ice with a sonic boom screams right ultimately getting close enough to Todoroki where he can finally use hand-to-hand -hand combat and Todoroki was about to use his fire not wanting to lose as a like a as a reflex but ultimately realizing he was about to use it he just kind of gives up on himself and Deku takes this opportunity and moment to absolutely crush 
Todoroki. He ends up defeating him with one full scream in his face and a punch to the gut, and Todoroki gets sent flying out of the arena, leading Deku versus Bakugo to be the next match that would be announced. Deku would smile knowing that this was ultimately going to be the final result, and so he gets happy and tells Bakugo not to hold out on him. Bakugo tells him not to hold out on him either, and so both adversaries would go to the stadium before getting ready and cracking their necks. Bakugo cracking his knuckles before saying, you ready? And Deku would say, <laughs> I was born ready. Immediately the match would start and Bakugo knowing that Deku was going to start it off with a sonic boom scream would shoot his way up and towards the air. Now, Deku seeing this would shoot at the direction of Bakugo where he was, but he would miss completely. And Bakugo spins in the air and shoots an AP shot at Deku which would actually hit. Deku would get sent flying on the floor and then Bakugo would uh, would kind of like shoot closer and shoot an explosion at Deku, which would cause Deku's eye, like Deku's vision to be like ca like completely caught off guard because of the smoke and then Deku realizes that he can't see but Bakugo can't either. And so Bakugo from the air would begin shooting massive amounts of explosions. And as that's happening, Deku would shoot a sonic boom scream at the direction where he thinks they're coming from. And so the explosions and the sonic boom scream would kind of like clash with each other. Bakugo amping it up even more and higher, higher, uh, like uh, explosion amps. And the explosion and the sound waves would just like clash. Like they're going crazy. Ultimately though, Deku shoots more and more sound waves and Bakugo falls down onto the ground, his ears bleeding as he now completely Completely went completely deaf can't really hear anything but he decides that if that's the case he's gonna just have to sacrifice his body for this dub getting up close and personal to Deku and Deku would realize that Bakugo was right there being completely caught off guard by his approach but Bakugo shoots an explosion point blank at Deku's face weakening him a lot and Deku gets up and then Bakugo clears the smoke with another explosion and you know they then get into close combat fighting Bakugo's pretty good at it considering he's been training with Izuku this whole time and so the match would be kind of even considering that Deku just got a complete like flashbang to the face you know what I mean Bakugo gets crazier and crazier with the explosions and ultimately it would be a battle of attrition seeing whose stamina and endurance can last longer but ultimately it would be Bakugo who comes out on top being more accustomed to his quirk than Deku would be to the sonic boom screams that he actually has access to and so Bakugo would be announced the winner of the sports festival event for UA High the best student in class 1A. And so right after this, Bakugo goes up to the stadium accepting his medal. Deku goes up there as well and you know, he congratulates Bakugo and Bakugo would be like, huh? Not hearing him. And Deku would be like, my bad about screaming at you. Sending him a text at Bakugo, which Bakugo would listen to. I mean, not listen to, but he would see and then he would reply, it was worth it. I beat you in front of everybody. And Deku was like, whatever, it's not like this is the first time I've lost to you. Keep in mind, I have more wins. And Bakugo would laugh saying, yeah, but I beat you in front of everybody though, nerd. As from here, you know, he laughs and Deku, Bakugo, and Tokiyami would be given their first, second, and third place tokens by All Might, sorry, medals, right? I was thinking about Wreck-It Ralph, that's why I said tokens. But, um... Pretty much what pretty much ends up ha pretty much what pretty much <laughs> um what, what ends up going down after this is they would find themselves in class the very next day and on this day let's generate a quirk what quirk are we going to be giving towards izuku what quirk let's see we're going to be get oh yeah we're going to go with the glitch quirk on this day deku's going to be having a glitch quirk which it's not really going to do anything considering nothing's going to happen but I figured it'd be cool to know. On this day, however, that they would return to school, the main thing that would go down is that they would end up picking their hero names and also picking their internships. When it comes to Izuku's hero name, he's going to end up going with the name Roulette, seeing as every single day, it's a new quirk. So he goes with the name Roulette, and he still isn't completely sure if he's going to go with that one, but it just, it just seems like kind of a cool name, you know what I mean? So... Yeah, by the way, shout out Flame. I know you told me the, the name that I should go with while we were playing Fortnite. So shout out to you. But anyways, what pretty much ends up happening following this is that Deku would just pick his agency, right? And All Might would be like, you know, you should go with Gran Torino because, you know, Gran Torino could probably teach you a lot. And Deku would just be like, yeah, you know, I would, but, you know, I don't really think I will. So instead... Instead of Deku going with Gran Torino, Deku would end up asking Nezu if there was any way at all that Deku could like intern by himself, you know what I mean? Like, because Deku really doesn't see the point 
of going with some random hero other than to just learn information on how to run an agency considering that his quirk is different every day so training with a pro hero wouldn't really help him out that much nezu ends up agreeing telling izuku that if anything he should train in hosu city saying that that's where the hero killer is and that he could potentially end up getting an op quirk and maybe taking him out hunting him that could be his mission he can intern under him and the only way he's gonna allow it is he is if he promises to defeat stain deku agrees to these conditions and all might would be so happy with izuku you know like all might basically views izuku as like his favorite student considering that izuku was the one responsible for bringing all might back to his 100 percent like he healing form right and so what pretty much ends up happening is that deku would make his way towards hosu city and on these days the first day izuku would get the quirk seaweed kind of like the girl with the vine hair izuku would have seaweed for hair that could pretty much shoot out and do whatever it is that he wants also having the ability of jet stream which izuku would have that is very very similar to gran torino's but um no, I'm just going to say it's literally Gran Torino's quirk. And so during this time, Izuku calls All Might and he would say, hey, you remember that hero you told me about? Any way I could go? He goes over there, meets Gran Torino, and they end up having a bit of a talk. Gran Torino teaches Deku how to use the quirk. And on this particular day would be the day of the Hosu incident. So Gran Torino and Deku make their way towards Hosu City. And it would be here that they would hear a massive explosion. Deku would look out of the window and see a Nomu coming at them. And Deku does exactly exactly what Gran Torino would have done in the original, shooting out of his seat and jumping at the Nomu before sending it crashing onto the ground and using his jet quirk to pretty much absolutely destroy the Nomu, giving it absolutely no chance or hope at, you know, defeating Deku. Deku following this hears a gut-wrenching scream that sounds super familiar and it would be Ida. And so Deku uses his jet stream quirk to just shoot over there and would finally end up arriving to see Stain, the hero kill. Immediately upon inspecting the situation, Deku notices that Stain is right about to stab Ida in his back, potentially a lethal blow. And what Izuku would do is something completely unexpected. Izuku uses his quirk to the absolute max, kicking Stain straight in the ribs and shattering one of them, leading to Stain like getting sent flying onto a wall, ricocheting off of it and then landing inside of a trash can. Izuku then grabs Ida seeing that he didn't get stabbed and would ask him what in the world he thinks he's doing here. Why was he anywhere near the hero killer? He shouldn't be anywhere near here. And Ida would just be like, get out of here. This is my fight. You know, obviously not being able to move, but Deku would say, you can't fight anybody right now. And so he would go to grab, um, would go to grab Ida. And it's at this moment when Stain would begin getting up. And he would stand up straight looking towards the direction of Deku before saying, he's not going anywhere. All you fake heroes are the same. He's gonna die. And Deku looks at the direction of Stain before saying, I don't think so. Stain at this moment then activates his bloodlust binding ability. The same thing that he used on, en on Endeavor and the heroes to pretty much cause them all to be like struck with fear. And it would be at this moment that Izuku would smirk and let out his own bloodlust binding. That's a technique that you can use and that anybody can use. Bloodlust binding isn't some quirk. That's just killing intent. Like just letting out a bunch of killing intent. And so Izuku would let out a bunch as well towards Stain. And Stain realizing that Izuku was not backing down and that that ability didn't scare Izuku whatsoever. He would say he's not going anywhere. That he's going to save everyone. And after hearing this... Stain would point his sword at the direction of Deku and say that he likes him. He'll let him go for now, but next time, he won't be so lucky. Stain would then do parkour and jump on top of the roofs before making a grand exit, and it would be at this moment that Ida would get up finally having Stain's quirk wear off, and then Izuku would look at the direction of Ida as Ida just pushes Deku and say, What are you thinking? You let the hero killer get away! And Deku just looks at Ida and would be like, are you serious? I saved your life. I just saved your life. Check yourself. He straight punches Ida square in the jaw and sends Ida to the floor. And Ida just looks up at Izuku and would be like, what? Like he's shocked. But Deku then looks at Ida and grabs him by the collar and says, do you have any idea what you were doing? Had I not have been here, he would have paralyzed you or worse, killed you. What were you going to do then? What was your brother going to do then with you dead? 
How in the world was you chasing after the hero killer the smart decision? Come on, class leader, tell me something. And Ida would just start crying, like just looking at Deku and just knowing that he he effed up. And Deku just looks at him and says that he'll talk later. But for now, he needs to, you know, help Native out. And so he grabs Native and Ida and calls the ambulance. The ambulance would arrive and it would be at this moment that a Nomu would end up arriving and would pretty much shoot towards the direction of Deku. Deku at this point would shoot up into the air and Gran Torino who would have already arrived would notice that Deku would blitz up into the air and kick the Nomu so hard its head would literally get shot off from its body. Suddenly, Izuku lands on top of it and stomps it with his foot and then goes on to look back at the direction of all of the heroes that were standing there smirks and says don't worry the threat was neutralized and so pretty much what would end up happening is two days would pass and during those two days izuku and ida would end up having a little moment between themselves where ida apologizes for his actions and stuff and the police chief dog tells them that you know they're not going to get credit and it's just going to go to endeavor and gran torino and that pretty much what's going to be happening is that you know they're just kind of going to um, try to cover up the situation as much as possible. And so what pretty much goes down is right after this, Gran Torino would tell Izuku that he truly does wish that Izuku's quirk was Jet because the way that Izuku was just fighting out there was impressive. It reminded him a lot of his old days. And he wishes that he could have had some sort of successor as well. Izuku laughs and thanks him for, you know, his time, his hospitality and all that stuff. And Gran Torino just looks at him and says, anytime kid, smiling. As from here, two days would pass and on this particular day, Deku would wake up with a brand new quirk. Izuku would begin testing it out and it would just so happen that he gets a pretty bad quirk. What pretty much ends up happening is that on this day, all of the students were about to have the hero race where they were going to check their progress. But instead of Izuku ending up actually arriving to school he would activate a quirk that could allow him to turn into animals like beast boy but he doesn't just gain their abilities he also gains their iq and izuku the first thing that he transformed into was a goat because he's the goat <laughs> and you know when this happens izuku you know he starts like being like meh you know what i mean and then inko walks in and she would be like ah, izuku you know what I mean? She grabs the goat and puts it in Izuku's room and she says, hopefully he doesn't trash the place too much. She then calls Yue and tells him that he got a bad quirk today. And Aizawa would end up answering the phone and would be like, what quirk did he get? And she'd say, he turned himself into a goat and I don't think he's going to be fixing that anytime soon. 24 hours would pass and Izuku would finally wake up the next day with a brand new quirk. On this day, he would be told that they're going to be having the final exams in about one week, and so they would have one week to prep for this. Because there's not going to be any battle and, and or any of that stuff, Izuku's quirk for this day doesn't really matter, but just know it's probably some random quirk. And then after this, what pretty much ends up going down is that for this week, Izuku decides to study, but on this particular day, they pretty much all end up going towards the mall, and because Shigaraki doesn't have that encounter with Stain, and Stain's video doesn't go out to the media and get really, really popular, Characters like Dobby, Toga, and Spinner don't actually end up joining the League of Villains. Not only that, but what pretty much also ends up happening is that Stain is still a free man, and so Shigaraki doesn't attack Deku with the Maw. If he did, Deku would probably fold bro like a complete omelette, so you know, it's kind of a good thing. But what pretty much ends up happening is for this week, Deku would simply study, and that entire week he would go on and get mid-level quirks. Eventually though, the day of the finals would finally come, and Deku on this particular day would end up getting a candy quirk, allowing him to turn anything that he touches into a candy beam, and also giving him access to using a candy beam, just like Majin Buu, right? And so, what pretty much ends up happening is that due to the fact that he and Bakugo both like have some decent synergy, and they think that not really anybody can face off against All Might, they would end up pairing Bakugo and Deku versus All Might. And so, the match would commence. All Might would put on the 500 pound weights on his arms and legs and stuff, but Deku would tell All Might to take those off, to trust him. He's not going to be needing those. And All Might would say, are you sure, young Midoriya? You do understand that I am at my, I am basically at my prime now, right? And Deku would say, do I understand? I don't think you understand how, how good of a team me and Bakugo make when it comes to fighting anybody. And Bakugo would smirk and say, trust All Might, you take those things off or you're going to pretty much die here. And All Might would say, sure, 
crushing them with each hand and then breaking them before looking at the direction of Deku and Bakugo and immediately Bakugo and Deku would split off in different directions. Getting cover from the buildings, suddenly Izuku would hold out a hand sign for a formation and Bakugo would immediately throw a grenade which would explode in front of All Might. All Might would smile realizing that they're using teamwork and Deku from here would blitz in before kicking All Might full force in the jaw and sending All Might flying back. All Might recuperates himself turning around and going to punch Bakugo who would twirl mid air and punch All Might square in the face sending him flying and a dust cloud would appear in All Might's face. Suddenly right after this Deku comes in and takes a hold of All Might straight grabbing him by the face and palming him and transforming All Might into a just piece of chocolate. Chocolate. All Might would stand there as a piece of chocolate and be completely inanimate and Izuku and Bakugo would laugh and like smile saying that that was too easy. Bakugo would say that today's quirk made it way too easy and that if Izuku would have just used nothing they still probably could have won it just would have taken a whole lot more out of them. And Deku would say you could say that again facing a 100% All Might would have been ludicrous. Bakugo laughs and so they get the dub. Eventually, they're all informed about the forest training camp, and so what pretty much ends up happening is that they end up all just, you know, doing their own things, getting prepared for this. They all go out shopping for their own individual things, and so what pretty much ends up happening is we find ourselves in the perspective of Izuku and Bakugo on the bus. They'd be talking about things, and everybody would kind of be having a conversation, but eventually they get to the forest, and Aizawa would trick them into falling off of the cliff and making their way towards the training grounds. They do so, and once they end up arriving towards the forest um, where they're going to be training at, they would all be tasked with training their quirks. But Deku decides that because of the fact that he has a new quirk every day he can't particularly train the quirk and so instead what Izuku would rather doing would be training hand-to-hand -hand combat with Aizawa. Aizawa obviously still using a scarf because he's not going to handicap himself and he would be surprised because Izuku could relatively keep up with Aizawa who is using a scarf and isn't exactly holding back as much as he should be. But Eventually, the next day would come by, and on this day, Deku would wake up with a rage quirk, not really understanding that he even had a quirk this day, just because it didn't really activate. Deku knows he has a quirk every day, but sometimes he thinks that they're duds, because some days he has a quirk that he doesn't really know how to control or gain access to, and it doesn't work in the way that most normal quirks do. It would be a rage quirk, so nothing would really happen until the end of the day, when Izuku would notice a young Koda making his way towards his favorite hiding spot, and beginning to cry tears. Deku walks over and would ask him what's wrong before getting down on knee level and you know looking towards Koda and saying that you know he's a hero you know he can talk to him. Koda would tell him to get lost and Deku would just say that you know sometimes we all need somebody to talk to even heroes and he puts a bowl of curry down next to Koda before telling him that if he needs anybody he's there and everybody else that is with him is also there for him. And Koda would just be like, stupid heroes. But suddenly, a figure of a massive man would arrive, and this would be muscular. Deku would then like notice this as he was walking away, and he would make his way back, only to see muscular approaching Koda, as he would say, <laughs> looks like it's my lucky day. I get to snap a twig in half. Easy kills. <laughs> Almost feels as easy as a video game. Kid, you might as well be a bot. And Coda just looks at Muscular in complete fear, realizing exactly who this is once Muscular takes off his cloak. And then Coda would cry, saying, It's 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 you. You're the you're the one that killed my and Muscular says, Shut up, kid, smacking Coda into the wall. And Izuku would immediately get angered by this, rushing in and punching Muscular square in the face. However, Muscular just tanks it and would grab onto Deku's body with one arm and toss him into the mountain. Deku would jump off of it with his legs, and then he would stand up straight, as Koda would say, Ah! You know, he has a broken arm. And then Izuku would ask him if he's okay, and Koda would say he's fine, but that's the guy that killed his parents. That's why he was so upset. He killed my par- my parents, he would say, and Deku would say, the Waterhouse heroes, those are your parents, right? Koda nods, and Muscular would say, huh, those were your parents? <laughs> That's great, can't believe that I finally get to end the bloodline. I didn't think I'd ever get so lucky, but uh, I guess it's my lucky day. And from here, what would pretty much end up happening is that Izuku 
would have a source of red energy just beaming off of him and Koda looks at Deku's eyes and sees that they're glowing somewhat and Izuku would say, you took this kid's parents and for that, you're gonna pay. He then rushes in at the direction of Muscular and throws a punch which would clash evenly with Muscular almost but Muscular increases the muscle fibers and BAM! Sends Izuku back flying, landing on a tree and crashing down on the ground. Izuku gets up, sort of weakened after that, and then using bloodlust binding would use it towards Muscular, who would simply laugh at that and say that if he thinks that he's going to be scared of his bloodlust, then he should try his. Releasing his own, Koda would pass out, and Izuku realizing the severity of this situation would like realize that rage, rage, it's his rage, like that's the quirk, he just got a power amp. All he needs to do is release more anger. So Izuku in his mind would picture Muscular killing Enko and he would scream out in, in such a way that Muscular just was, was not expecting. Izuku then blitzes at the direction of Muscular and you know just straight grabs him by the neck and snap. Just straight snaps Muscular's neck and throws him off of the cliff, then rushing towards uh, Koda, and then putting him right where Aizawa was at before telling him that villains are attacking and that he needs to take care of the students. From here, using his anger, he would go inside of the forest and begin destroying villains one by one, until finally, All For One arrives. And once All For One arrives, things would finally change, because this time around, All Might is actually present, so All For One decided to show himself, and he would also be there with his successor Shigaraki. Deku and All Might seeing this all play out would immediately tag team against both of them, but because Shigaraki is fairly a weakling kind of character, Izuku would easily be able to knock out Shigaraki, with All For One being surprised at Izuku's speed. Izuku and All Might both tag team All For One, and it would be going good until All For One reveals the identity of Shigaraki as um, Tenko Shimura. And All Might would kind of like feel everything kind of rip apart from him, you know what I mean? Like he, he kind of loses track of what's going on. And Izuku snaps him out of it. He's like, All oh Might, we don't have time to be thinking about what All For One did to him or anything like that. We have to fight this guy. Right now, he's threatening to kill all the students. So unless you're willing to take all of them dying just because you can't perform, then do something, All Might. Go beyond. Plus, Ultra. And All Might just looks at his hands, smiles, and says, Thanks, Izuku. You can stay back now, blitzing at all for one and then landing at the final finishing blow, taking the villain out once and for all. And so all for one, Shigaraki, Kuragiri, Muscular, and all of the other characters who would have ended up showing up for this specific event would all end up getting captured, leading to a cleanup situation happening and eventually Izuku going towards the hospital because he had a couple of fractured bones in his right hand, the ones that he ended up clashing with muscular. The next day the quirk would wear off and he would end up getting a quirk that is very, very useless. It gives him no bones in his body, a jellyfish quirk. And with no bones in his body, he couldn't move all day, so it was kind of a really, really bad quirk to get, but um, on the flip side, he didn't feel any pain, and so when this bones finally came back, they were healed because they came back as fresh new bones, you know, so pretty much what ends up going down after this is that Izuku would find himself in a little bit of a one-week time skip, and what Izuku would see is Todoroki and Inasa facing off against each other, getting in each other's way, not allowing the other to perform well in the exam against King Orca, considering that they were doing the provisional license test right now. Eventually, Izuku snaps them out of it and both of them are capable of getting their license. So is Bakugo, so the only person who needs to take the remedial course would be Kami, who didn't end up taking the exam. And so, everybody this time around pretty much ends up getting their provisional licenses, and after that, two days would go by, meaning the weekend Saturday and Sunday and eventually Monday would come around and they would meet the big three on this day Deku would end up waking up with a weaker telekinesis quirk similar to his mother's except actually it's a little bit weaker so on this particular day when Mirio ends up facing off against all of the students and Mirio you know fights everybody else and would be able to knock most of them out 
Bakugo would tell Izuku that he wants to fight him one on one. And so Bakugo would jump in and face off against Mirio. However, Mirio, using the tactic of poking the eyes and landing an uppercut, would finally be able to land a blow on Bakugo. And Bakugo would get, like, pretty much, like, tanking a lot of damage, would be sent flying to the floor. Mirio then blitzing at the direction of Deku and going over to try to fight him hand to hand combat. However, because that's pretty much Deku's specialty, even though he has a weak quirk, he would easily be able to keep up with Mirio who was now completely naked. That would throw Deku off guard a little bit but ultimately he continues throwing blow after blow after blow and Bakugo then immediately shoots him with his explosions shooting a blow at Mirio which he would dodge and because he would dodge the blow the explosion would cause a dust storm to pop up. Deku not being able to see he would then be like Bakugo get your head in the game and Bakugo would say I am as from here you know Mirio pops back up and taking advantage of their moment of like bickering with one another. Mirio comes in and straight clobbers Deku on the side of the head, knocking him out, and then Bakugo would then get kicked by Mirio as he would say, Bower! And, you know, they were completely caught off guard. Like, in the whole years that Deku has had quirks, not once has he had a quirk similar to Mirio's. So Deku would think to himself that hopefully someday he can get access to something like that. That that thing was incredibly powerful. And he's absolutely right. Mirio's quirk is so busted. But pretty much what ends up happening after this is that because Izuku didn't have a good quirk, he underperformed. However, he still did decent compared to Mirio's and what his original standards were. Pretty much what ends up happening is that Mirio would offer an internship with Sir Nade and Izuku would end up accepting. This time, even though Sir Nade is a hard egg to crack, he would still end up stamping um, Izuku's thing. And ultimately, what would pretty much end up going down is that Izuku would go on a patrol with Mirio. On this said patrol, Izuku would end up gaining the access to a storage quirk, which can pretty much store things inside of an inventory slot that he gained access to. However, that's literally all that he has access to. And then he would get a little girl bumped into him as she would look extremely scared and hurt and bruised. Izuku picking her up would ask her if she's okay and suddenly overhaul from the alleyway would make his appearance. This scene goes down just like in canon. Deku doesn't have a quirk powerful enough to beat Deku right, be overhaul right now and Mirio realizes that you know, this is Overhaul, the one that they've been making a whole operation to take down for this past, like, months, you know what I mean? So he can't, like, ruin everything, you know what I mean? Like, what if he messes everything up? So he tells Deku to, like, back down and give Eri back, and he does so. For the following next couple of days, Deku literally can't sleep over this, and he would tell Bakugo what he did. Bakugo would tell him that he definitely messed up and that he should have fought him. Die or not, he can't let somebody suffer any longer, knowing that they are. And Izuku would say that he knows. He failed as a hero today, but he promises the next time that he's able to save her, he's not going to let her go. And Bakugo would send a text saying, you better not, gotta go, in the middle of a fight. And he would send the peace emoji. As from here, Bakugo would shoot an explosion at the villain and win. Then going on to have a like, little press conference thing with um with Best Genius. And pretty much after this, what would end up going down is that Izuku would finally arrive on the day of the raid. On this particular day, Izuku would gain the ability of rewind, and using this, he would go through the entire thing that Izuku and all of the other characters would do in canon. And going through it, he literally one shots everybody. Using his ability of rewind, he can rewind these characters back to when they were babies and that's exactly what Deku would do he rewinds them to the point where they were kids and babies and stuff like that and they were pretty much no longer factors in the battle eventually Izuku arrives only to see Mirio facing off against Overhaul and seeing Mirio get hit with a quirk destroying bullet however Deku realizing that you know Mirio lost his quirk would simply jump in the way tap Mirio and Mirio would get reverted back to when he still had it. Mirio then goes inside of the ground, comes out and uppercuts Overhaul who didn't know that he could have got his quirk back that fast and then Deku would end up blitzing in at Overhaul who's still mid-air and wasn't able to catch balance or do anything or make contact with anything physical so he wasn't able to do anything and Izuku would tap Overhaul turning him right back into a baby and ultimately leading Overhaul to um um what's it called leading overhaul to essentially be taken out immediately and afterwards 
Izuku would have a cleanup moment where he simply stands by the heroes, grabs Eri and tells her that he'll never let her go again. And Eri would cry, you know, she smiles and cries at the same time, and eventually the whole situation would be avoided. Immediately, Izuku would send a text towards All Might asking him a question. Does he want to go back to his full prime once more? And All Might would be like, sure because not only does all might get to go back to his prime but he also gets more years added to his lifespan deku having access to the quirk rewind theoretically could just send people back to when they were a lot younger and save a lot of years of their life and deku would do so and revert a bunch of pro heroes that have been in action for years back to 10 years before so all of them get younger they keep their power and ultimately deku's ability of rewind would help hero society so much as a whole helping out a bunch of people who were near death a moment and a bunch of people who were sick in the hospital deku would rewind them to before they got sick and stuff like that and so deku would like go all over the news that day and people would like really really find out the name of izuku midoriya or the pro hero roulette and that, ladies and gentlemen, would be the end to What If Deku Had Every Quirk. Let me know what you guys thought about this one down below in the comment section. I definitely love recording this entire series, and I had a lot of fun doing it. If you guys go on to enjoy this one, then please consider leaving a like on all of the previous parts of this, seeing as you already watched them all, you might as well do your boy a favor, as it helps so much in the algorithm. Seriously, you guys don't understand. And if you guys could do me the biggest favor in the world, and just... Just, you know, watch the movie version of this, you know, just leave it playing in the background or leave a like on it or something, or, or at least just click on it twice. That would help your boy out so incredibly much. Y'all don't understand. But with all that out of the way, with me completely like stop begging and selling out, it has been your boy Zether and I am out. Peace.